One of the highly requested questions in chat is how do I rank up from Platinum to GM? How do I rank up from Silver to GM? How do I win more games? My teammates are growing. Um, what do I play in this scenario? And other questions like that. What I want to do is I want to start a series by doing unranked to GM and I'm going to do it very slowly. I'm going to make a decision making. I'm going to explain everything I do on a certain hero in every game. Chat, I'm gonna focus on the game. So after this, I'm gonna probably take some questions and hopefully this game will not be a free win or a free loss. If it's a free loss, then I will try to explain what happened. If it's a free win, there's nothing to explain other than my teammates played good. Um, so I'm just going to uh, try to focus on talking this game. They have a four stack, so I'm expecting about the, about this game being more organized from the enemy. So as I as I told you, like last two games felt really easy, and now they have a four stack. So kind of like the system you see for those two wins. In theory, they're making it so this game uh, I'm at a big disadvantage. I only have a duo. They have a four stack. Like that's the price if you get some free wins. So this is more of a challenge. You don't need to be relaxed after you have you have had some easy games. It's just the system making it harder for you to um, win the game right now. The algorithm. Anyway, I'm gonna sit in the back. Gonna stay with my Orisa hook. Again, same same lesson. Don't get pulled. Don't get hooked. And don't get snipes. Stay behind the shield. That's all I gotta do. I just gotta heal. On this map, you have the advantage of not even staying behind the shield. You can stay over here. Wait, I need to change this really fast because I'm dropping FPS. Oh god, hook. I couldn't react to that anyway. When they have Zen and the distance is short of the distance of the hook is very short, then you cannot help them survive. I got out. Okay. Oh fuck. My team left me. The widow said I need help and three people went over there to the widow. Giving them the high ground. Widow was fine there. Trying to get out. Like she had grapple. She got healed even if she dies. That's like this is one of the primary mistakes in Master. Learning what positions you need to hold and what positions to give up. So what if Widow dies? We're 4 versus 5, but we have the optimal position to hold them over there. Or 5 versus 5. I can't remember if somebody died in the beginning. The door is with nano blades and with widow planking on a side. I'm going to try to play close. I'm going to move down. In the back just a bit, they use hook, they use deflect. Careful about Widow, always moving, always crouching, never jumping. They're going to the pull hook again. We almost don't have shield. They use the pull, they use the deflect, going to start shooting. Right, going to use the one to go in. Have to get some kills. We got a kill, we traded. We're 4 versus 4 guy now and they use nano blade. And nice, okay, we, we popped off with it. So, whenever like you feel like you're using control, sometimes if you... If you like this is the beauty of Overwatch and of gaming in general. If you waste your time thinking if you should ultimate or not, then you're use, you're wasting moments of opportunity. The enemy team went like, Orisa dead, go, nanoblade, go, just fucking go in. And me as an experienced player, I knew that that's what they wanted to do. So I was like, okay, you're gonna go, but I'm gonna take one with me. I can't help that. If the hook is like too long, like there, there's no way for me to try to deny that. I need to predict the hook. If the distance is short and they have um can do low, the good thing, folks gonna look to cook me. I need to kill somebody. If the distance is short then I can't do anything about it. I love the pink related ultimate. Fuck dude. I thought he would jump and see me there. That's why I want to try to shit. Wanted. Green fire, things are prime for 11 months. So yeah, that's the problem with Baptiste with Torisa Hawk. If they get short hooks and they have a Discord orb, then your tanks are going to die instantly. You're playing with dive, okay. They're going right side. Oh, this is very hard for me to even get out. Winston doesn't have wolves, so I need to throw my mortality field there just to make sure he can survive. Oh, we need wolves. Genji will deflect main. It's half HP Genji. Get a hog. No vape. Would have popped off though. Good. 
if there's a Genji Nano blading, honestly, one of the tips that is very ignored is separating from your Gardex support. Because he needs, like if somehow you can get past the wall, or in the case of Baptiste, use your jump to like get out of range, then he needs to think really well how he's going to dash. So that's like one of the underlooked things. They have Winston, they probably want to dive the Widow. I'm going to play over here, throw my mortality field inside and try to apply some pressure in case they go on high ground. Yeah, they go on high ground, throw mortality field in. Okay, break this, use this, the spam. Wins is not focusing this, so I should be fine. Break the shield. I know I'm not going to kill to transcendence. I'm just breaking the shield, killing out my teammates. Somebody's low there. The Widow is low. They don't have a hook, so I can try to jump a little bit and try to move because I'm not under any pressure or getting hooked into them. They have a Hanzo, so I need to be careful. Right now, the platform is closed, so I'm going to make use of this platform because we're playing with dive comps. If you're playing like with Togisa Hog, yeah, you can play from. You can play from over there in the back, but if you're playing, I don't want Diva to get the mech. Uh, if you're playing like with dive comp, then this position is very good for any healer that can get to it. I need to go out. The enemy is not even looking at me. Kind of late there. This should be fun. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so this spot is very good to stay. If you're playing with dive comp and the enemy team doesn't pay attention to you, it's kind of hard to get here reliable. Like you cannot reliably, you cannot jump from low ground, you can only jump from this. So you need to be careful the way it is going to move. They have also dive comp, so for them to push me off, they need to like jump all the way up on top. And they're not going to waste their jump to get to me. I'm going to jump over here, wait a bit. And I can't see, like you cannot do it from there, you can only do it from top. I don't have time, Brick died, probably gonna wait for them to regroup. Actually, ball is going in, going on behind onto the Widow. Charging this up, walking a second, jumping on top, missing miserably. Then jumping again, they miss miserably two times, because why the fuck not? Because like, why not play live on stream? Charging this up again, then jumping up. And of course, third time's the charm. Just chilling here in the back. When they dive in, I'm going to think. I either ult in front of the choke point over here, for my team to like try to get value or I'm going to keep the ultimate for myself. Diva's going to get the mech. Actually, is she fine? No, she's going to get the mech. We got two kills though, we're just popping off, we should be fine. Bull's going to come in, we're going to dive, they probably have primal. I'm just going to ult for myself, not right now. Later on in the team fight. He's going to crash, the widow's going to get contested. Now just ulting for myself, trying to poke them out. Instant has primal, no need for me to heal him. Gotta kill with my ult, that's all I care about. Instance low, monkey on top. By the way, I wanted to highlight something. Like, it's very important to know that if you have the option, if the team fight is won, and you have the option of saving any other target and not saving and saving your diva that is in mech. Always try to save your diva, especially if there's a map in which you're going to struggle to um, to like the diva will not be able to reset by throwing herself off the map until the enemy comes back. Horizon is one of those maps. You need to go on the moon, so that's first point. On second point, there's no way for her to kill herself. Temple two is another example. Like if there's no way for your diva to reset fast, then all, almost give your life if the enemy cannot cap the point if you do so to keep your diva alive because her being in mech is more important because if the enemy team starts walking in if, if they play it correctly and don't take damage from the baby diva then you're essentially engaging six versus five and a half because baby diva just shoots so that's it what if the enemy team had a widow no if the enemy team had a widow that position is kind of risky Depends also, because I'm playing with dive heroes. If they have a Widow and she picks up left, because you know, like I hear my team talking a lot. So if the, if the Widow picks high ground, my Widow can take control one. Second, my dive tanks will contest and I just hide behind that uh, bug, moving, floating bug, whatever the fuck you call it, platform. Um, if she goes lower right, then I'm safe also by hugging the opposite side, crouching and my team engages and the Widow cannot get sidelines on me. So you can technically play around the sniper, but if the sniper is really good and fast and if your team is not trying to contest the Widow, then you're going to have problems. But usually, honestly, 
up until probably diamond you can play in that position and get away with it without any problem because people usually don't know how to do how to focus bugs and people out of there going to get hook, use anti, no with their hook, they don't have their hook, okay Almost have ultimate, honestly. Oh my god, the song is so nice. Almost have ult. As long as we don't get hooked, we should be fine. We can go on the stacks, I have ult. Let's move. Just to push, we get a kill out of it. They have foot, just be careful about staying outside of hook range. How the fuck did that hook me out of everybody? I have no idea. I leave us in them, just to pocket hook. Let's have Montati field. Going to get hooked again. Waiting, he's going to look for a hook. Going to hook somebody, put Montati field in. By the way, my team was moving, it was obvious that they're going to ignore the hook. Hook is main. Hook is one. Hook behind you. Just go under, go under guys side. Don't go high ground. Just go, go, go. Can we beat him? Usually, like, in, in that case, if this would have been like, let's say, uh, Probably GM or the higher up uh, using B to engage, um, kind of like not that needed. We can just walk to point, but bit is more of a safety measure, so to say. In case this is like a cool trick for for all the Lucius. If let's say you don't have a clear ultimate to counter and just need to counter if somebody gets low, because like you don't have a wombo combo to counter, then you can use your ultimate more proactively. As in trying to engage in shit. I still have my mortality because I'm just poking. I almost have ult. We have that. I just wanna hide a bit. Wait it out, wait it out. They're going to drop, I have a good angle. Yeah, 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 dude. I feel unstoppable also. I was just looking left side. I was going to get touch and we went to GM. Like see, I would say in Master, the most important thing you need to understand with Baptiste is proper usage of your mortality field to break choke points. Proper immortality field usage and use your ultimate as fast as possible. So. When attacking, I'll give you an example. There are, of course, certain areas of the map, and every Baptist player is experimenting with it, in which the, the window, your ultimate, people call it the window, oh, on a name from what I've seen, the window and the disc, uh, as immortality field, the disc being immortality field. There are certain areas in which, it, the, like, obviously, your ult is not going to work that much, but the beauty of Baptiste's ultimate is, if the only way you can fuck it up is... If you never ult when you see people in front, like if you ult just to break a choke point, it's going to be a bad Ready. ultimate, but not that bad. I'll give you an example. Let's say first point. Fuck my ult up really fast. We have ult. And now we walk. Like look, for example, this is a bad ultimate. But, considering the fact that they're all grouped up and our primary goal is to try to get high ground, it was an okay ultimate because I didn't hesitate. If I would have waited for my team to go all the way up on high ground, we could have gotten anti-nated very easily by the enemy Ana. So that's why I wanted to like apply some pressure. Also get hooked, also maybe get poked out by the Hanza. So, they go for a pull. Theory mortality field in front a bit Thank over here just to be careful and use my ultimate like right now the only goal of my ultimate is to, to like try and get wait wait where's my ult okay uh, is to try and destroy the shield and force them back like for example from a geometrical point of view this area to ult is very bad because you're like in an 
in this slope you're going you're going to focus them from here and get on top of the stakes and then you're not going to do anything in hindsight the way i should have vaulted was on top of the stakes but we're all learning the hero and this is the beauty of replays and of analyzing your gameplay anyway the thing is this nonetheless with this ultimate we don't manage to get a pick we manage to break the shield they go low and we get what we wanted in getting high gun but if we would have ulted over here with Baptiste, I think we could have gotten a kill until they got out. Anyway, with the ultimate, the space created, my Widow can just snipe them from main because I forgot to tell you this. This is like of an involuntary uh, strategy, strategical setup. Because you're trying, five people are trying to push on high ground, use Baptiste tool to fox them down and then Widow can snipe them from work for free from mid. This is something that's reserved for teams, not for ranked gameplay. It's quite hard to set up things like this. So this was just like, let's say, a happy little accident because the Widow understood the fact that she didn't need to push with us and just machine gun the shield and stay here because we're going to push them from right side. So this is an example of a, like an ultimate that you just use it to create space, to push through, but it can be better. And that's the beauty of every Baptist ultimate. Every time, every fight, you can always place the ultimate better, even one step better. Anyway, and the second part of the map that I wanted to show you was when we were attacking. Oh, the second point. Last fight. So, it's about like proper immortality field usage, not necessarily about ultimate usage. The enemy can only see this part, right? Like, they cannot shoot through the door or over here. So if they hold on high ground and are pushing high ground, a well-placed immortality field here or even here can help you stay safe without having a shield in front. With this being said, we're moving up. Shield is going to get placed, hook is going to go through. The immortality field is there hooked. We have immortality field here and now look how wide of an angle we can take. They cannot destroy the immortality field and we're safe and we're shooting past the shield. Okay, so it's like proper immortality field usage. If you watch Overwatch League or the stream, <laughs> you're going to see that there you uh, a lot of Baptists will just place immortality field around the corner and then the team will pick. This is very safe to do if the enemy hog does not have an opportunity to hook you because A, they don't have a hog or B, uh, they already used hook. So using immortality field after they use the hook is the way to go. If they don't have a road hog, you can just use it instantly. If there is no other way to block the hook, as in with the shield or even Orisa Fortify eating the hook. Or even Diva eating the pool. It's kind of odd. Anyway, you do this immortality field once, you poke them out. And then look at this. We use Bongo, they push out, we wait. Remember, we kept the point earlier. And right now, we have our ultimate back up again. We'll try it in front, so my Orisa benefits from it. In hindsight, I could have placed... Like, over here, this is an example of, again, the beauty of Baptiste. If I place my ult up really in front, then people go like, yeah, and everybody... What the fuck, Moira's face? I love these faces. Oh, look at them, all grouped up. Mm -mm -mm, juicy. Anyway, so... <laughs> Now, this is the problem. A lot of people would go like, yeah, dude, but if you place Baptiste ultimate, the perfect placement, as you said earlier, Baptiste is ultimate, so your entire team can benefit from it in case they shoot from the platform over there on the edge, is to place it in front of them, right? Right. But we need to take into consideration the fact that they will probably drop. And if they will probably drop, I, I don't want to drop with Baptiste, I want to play from the platform. So, we use the ultimate, we get some picks, we start moving in, and then look at the beauty of ult placement and of being creative. Do not ever get, um, get sad of how you place your ultimate with Baptiste. Because you can always be creative. Right now, I want to place the ultimate in such a manner so I A, I can break the choke, and B, I can somehow see people recontest over here when they're going to drop. Because they were all playing from here. So you see, we benefit, three people benefited, four people benefited at least for a second for the ultimate being placed here, and Hog even dies from it. So... Although sometimes in theory you can use Baptiste's ultimate to break one choke point, one to do one thing, you need to try to view in the future also for proper ultimate usage. I think you can get like two or three, you can get three maximum values out of an ultimate, although you can probably get get more if I decide to think about it more, uh, uh, more logically. Because this is what's gonna happen. Use your ultimate, one, to break a shield, to break a choke. Second, you placed your wall in such a way to break the choke and B to see 
amazing year. And two, not one B. Uh, two, Let's to go. see where... Um, to think where the enemy will recontest after you break that choke point. And the third aspect is literally just using the ultimate and positioning yourself in such a manner to benefit from the extra healing of it no matter where you place it. So I think that right now everybody is playing Baptiste probably just use the ult in front to break the choke point for head as in they're saying here we place the ult here we break the choke point and then we walk to point. I think people can get more value out of the ultimate. As in let's say you see that they're holding on left side instead of placing the ult here if you all run a rush mid try to place it not in front of their shield but try to place it probably over here so in case they walk outside of spawn right side to recontest if let's say somebody died in the beginning you can also benefit from the placement of his ultimate so what i want you to get out of it is like two things one the easiest one is place your immortality field around walls and always make sure to not get hooked because orisa hog is being played a lot if uh, they used hook, you can place immortality field and poke. If they don't have a hog, you can place immortality field and poke. If you place immortality field, they have full hook and you don't trust your tanks to do anything about it and you get hooked, then you're essentially feeding. Second, with your ultimate usage, always make good use of your ult and always be proactive with it in a way as in, as in not flaming yourself or listen to your teammates flame yourself for a bad ult placement. This is something that I also need to work on. Exactly, and be creative with it because an ultimate in front can always do. And a badly placed ultimate is an opportunity to understand one, to understand one, yeah, uh, how to break a certain area and how to place it. And second, to try to think where you could have placed it, uh, how you can get value out of it, although you placed it over there. So let's say, for example, you remember this ultimate here. Okay, we break this, and what can I get from it? Shooting at the enemy? No, I can get the third thing that I talked about over there with the ultimate. I can get extra healing. My team's not getting poked out, so this ultimate stay on the stacks not that viable. Because uh, again, the example is: let's say if I place the ultimate here and somebody's on high ground, I can benefit from it. So again, to summarize, always try to view your gold as more than just a shield to break a choke point. You can always get a lot of value out of it. And second, uh, place your mortality field in corners. Uh, make sure to not get hooked so they and make sure that they cannot destroy the immortality field and um, the moon is absolutely beautiful hey I live here Kappa. okay